think uh, um, in my talk today, I want to uh, give you some flavors of metabolomics and the more ad advanced uh, development currently, and also give you one or two examples and uh, the application area. So the importance of technology. So I'd like to start my talk with a uh, quote, uh, uh, Professor Sidney Brenner's uh, talk. He said, uh, uh, progress in science depends on new technologies, new discoveries, and new ideas, probably that order. Professor uh, Sidney, he is a Nobel Prize winner uh, in his contribution uh, of for develop C. elegans for uh, animal model, uh, for research uh, models. So uh, as a biologist, he reckon the technology is very important. I mean, uh, also in, in, in Chinese word, uh, some of you may, may be able to read. So we, we always believe that the technology is very important. Um, so this is uh, the map of uh, metabolites. So this is only represent one sixteenth of uh, metabolic pathways. So I can, uh, you can see this is very complicated. And in this uh, metabolic pathways, there are uh, different structures and uh, um, uh, different uh, metabolites. So this campaign, uh, metabolites containing different uh, 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 functional group like uh, carbonyl or uh, amino. And there's also steroids and uh, lipids and this different metabolites. Not only that, the concentration of those metabolites in uh, a system is uh, uh, in greater di uh, diversity. It's uh, uh, like in the tens of orders of magnitude differences. Clearly, with this kind of the complex, complex in structure and, comp and, and the different in dynamic range, uh, one tool cannot uh, 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 solve all this problem. So in, in Singapore Phenom Center, we take an approach of integrated approach. This is the integration of NMR uh, and the integration of LCMS. So NMR technology is uh, uh, it's, uh, very good for quantification, but it's very insensitive. Uh, and then we also have a LCMS. This is non-targeted LCMS. So non-targeted LCMS, although it can give you a lot of features, but the structure information is limited. One has to spend a lot of time to do uh, to to kneeling knee, uh, to de de derive the structure information, and also I think the the, quantifi the quantification purpose is probably not that as as good. And the, the also we also develop a range of uh, uh, targeted tools. So we divided the, the metabolites into different, uh, according to their structures, into different uh, either pathways or similar in their structures. Uh, for example, we, we, we have, you know, make, it, make a, a panel of consistent amino acid or, or maybe just lipid or maybe tryptophan metabolism. So we can range of this um, um, to, to cover different metabolites. But clearly there's a, a drawback because they don't have a uh, the coverage is limited compared to non-targeted analysis. So with the, uh, just to highlight uh, uh, technology in NMR, so this one, uh, we, know, we all know the lipoprotein is important, uh, particularly uh, for people who study cardiovascular disease. So we go to hospital, the, 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 the doctor would take their blood and, um, and measure the HDL, VLDL, and then that related to your risk factors of, of cardiovascular disease. But in NMR, we can divide this into 120 different, 112 of different uh, lipoprotein subfractions. And so this is based on the this is based on the uh, deconvolution of a CH2 or CH3 group in the in the lipid uh, in the lipid, and then so for each for each of these uh, 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 lipoproteins, uh, you could get uh, the different triglycerides, uh, or cholesterol, free cholesterol, or different uh, um, uh, uh, proteins. Um, and then uh, you can see uh, if we measure if we uh, compare the clinic measurement, they have a linear uh, correlation. I think uh, this is a very good tool uh, for measure different lipoproteins. Uh, another thing I like to mention that is the uh, the robustness. So uh, you can see the reproducibility is, is is so 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 good compared to SMS. So when we say SMS reproducibility is 20%, uh, you know, then we the error RSD is 20%. We can accept it, but in this case, you can see. It's uh, in, in, uh, in uh, less than two percent, uh, so this highlights the 
uh, the advantage. So we know we know our uh, NMR is a dis is a dis one of the disadvantage is the uh, sensitivity, right? So um, so in this study we're using. C13 labeled uh, acetyl uh, dehydrate uh, de dehydrogenate, and then uh, to uh, to derive uh, uh, metabolize with the AMI containing AMI group. So then you can see um, with the uh, then we, we do the uh, HSQC. So you can see uh, the sensitivity increased uh, uh, huge. So you can get uh, the uh, LOD of 0 0.1 uh, micromolar. And uh, uh, within this is all within five minutes uh, acquisition. So this is a, a hugely this is a, a way forward to improve the sensitivity of the NMR. And so clearly, there's also drawback. It's not all the uh, uh, target uh, uh, metabolites can be positively identified. So what you need is build up a, a, a database. Uh, build up database means you need a, a standard, right? So in this study, there's over 100 uh, standard uh, uh, database has been uh, uh, constructed. So this uh, this method uh, was really uh, uh, widely applied in. And in the LCMS, so for the for the for the metabolites containing all this uh, polar group, and it's very difficult to retain and very difficult to detect uh, with the uh, with the MS with the LCMS. So what you could do is to derive using a probe to to uh, to connect with the, the metabolites you're interested in, and then uh, make it easy to 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 detect. This is an example that you use this. Uh, uh, a compound to uh, derivatize with the uh, uh, metabolized contain AMI group, and then you do detection. So this is one with the one injection you could uh, uh, you could you could detect uh, quantitatively uh, 120 metabolites. So those metabolites cover over 20 uh, different metabolic pathways. That you can see the advantage of this uh, um, uh, integrated uh, uh, approach. So uh, we use this approach also look at the C13 uh, flux analysis that you can see uh, uh, this in this study we use in two different uh, uh, strategy with the with the with the metabolites you can detect the straight way and then you 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 detect and the otherwise for those metabolites particularly in the in the uh, carbon 13 uh, um, glucose metabolic pathways that we use in this uh, uh, derivatization uh, reagent, um, and then we, we can we can we can detect uh, uh, about 20, uh, 84 uh, different uh, C13 labeled metabolites in these uh, central carbon metabolism pathways. Um, so as you can see, uh, we use uh, this uh, uh, MPE to to derivatize uh, the the A the AMI containing uh, the, the carb carboxylic group uh, metabolites. So this study uh, shows that uh, we use hydrogen-based uh, derivatization reagent and that you'll be able to uh, separate D and L metabolites. So the implication of this is, is huge, in particularly if you're interested in the uh, gut microbe uh, and, uh, and the host interactions, because uh, we believe um, uh, uh, a lot of the D metabolites are generated by plant or, 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 or microbes. So the, uh, this, uh, this uh, this, uh, this uh, method is very useful for teeth out what is the contribution of the microbes uh, in terms of for uh, uh, metabolize and then their impact to our health. Um, uh, we take it further. Uh, so uh, we know the non-targeted analysis gave you huge, huge coverage, but targeted analysis gave you more sensitivity and quantification, but the coverage range is very limited, okay? So what we do with this metabolize that we don't, we cannot purchase or, or, or the, 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 the metabolize, the, the standard is not available. So uh, in this study, we incorporate uh, QSAR, uh, means uh, the uh, retention time prediction plus, uh, plus, uh, the the uh, LCMS, and then we could could uh, um, build up a huge uh, database. So in this study, we actually first be using uh, uh, some start some standard. For example, 100, 200 uh, standard. We obtain the 
the retention time and the molecular features uh, of, of those uh, standards. And then we also uh, using the molecular de descriptor uh, to, uh, to, um, to predict the retention time, um, uh, construct a database. So for this, for this study, we, we basically uh, uh, built up 1,200 uh, compound in, in a database. Uh, with, the, with the retention time prediction, you basically increase the uh, confidence in your annotation of the metabolites. So we take it further with this method, combine the uh, derivatization with the, also the retention time prediction. So uh, with, this, with this study, we use two molecules. Uh, we, we use two uh, retention time, uh, we use two derivatization strategy, and uh, we c created uh, 110K metabolites. Uh, so with this metabolites, we can, we can actually put it on the, on the website. So whoever interested in this uh, uh, category of metabolites can go to the database and then download the things, the metabolites you are interested in, and then follow the, uh, follow the, the SOP. So you can do derivatization and basically construct uh, a database in your own lab. So I think with this combination of the uh, derivatization plus retention time prediction that you overcome of, of the issues that uh, limitation of coverage of target analysis, also limitation of annotation capability of an untargeted profiling. I feel this is a, a, a great uh, way forward in the future metabolomics. So in our lab, we also uh, developed um, a single cell metabolomics. So that you can see, uh, we developed these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, microfluid chips. So when the cells go through the chips, and uh, it being separated by the decoupled inner shell cell, cell ordering um, uh, um, mechanism. So then we detect using mass spect to detect uh, the single cell metabolites. So, so you can see each of the peak indicate it's the, uh, it's the single cell uh, signals. And then here is the total mass. And then you can see it's very different from the, from the, from the uh, background information. So, so the problem with this uh, uh, single cell metabolomics is like, if you imagine it's infusion and, and detection, right? So you don't have the LC retention time uh, um, uh, information. Then you, you don't, the, the metabolite you detect is only give you a mass information. So therefore the annotation is not confidence, right? So in our study, we, we incorporated the eye mobility uh, uh, mass spectrometry to give us the confidence of the metabolized identification. So this is our major contribution to, to, to this work. So we use in the, uh, 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 we use the single cell uh, metabolite, um, metabolomics incorporated with the eye mobility uh, spectrometry, and then we can confidently uh, identify uh, uh, about 19 uh, metabolites. Uh, it's, it's not a lot, but I think it's the, it's the beginning is the principle that uh, matters. Um, so there's also drawback uh, in, in this study. So the isolation of cells is strictly not, not strictly native. So there's a still uh, a lot of work uh, to be done in, in this field. So in, in Singapore Phenom Center, we also capable of uh, conduct mass spec imaging. So mass spec imaging um, is when you, you give, you, 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 you produce a piece of tissue, then you, you take a mass spec from each, each of the dot. So they, de they, they part from uh, the res resolution is 50, 50 microns. So, um, so you get this spectra. So how do you interpret it? So it's very difficult. So in, in, our, in, in our contribution in this study is that uh, we, we uh, in integrate this uh, mass spec imaging together with the histological uh, 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 information. So we know exactly which site is the tumor, which site is the fibrotic, right? By, in, by, in, by integration of the histology study together with the mass spec, you can really pick out the tumor region 
precisely tumor region uh, spectra and then with the non-tumor region. Uh, so th this way, uh, it's easy to interpret it. So we, can, we selected this uh, t exact tumor region and non-tumor region, and then we performed uh, a, a multivariate data analysis, and, and then this is the, uh, the volcanoes uh, plot. So uh, you can see some metabolites increased or decreased in, the, in this, uh, um, in this uh, uh, tumor. And then if we plot this tumor, uh, uh, this uh, identified metabolites uh, onto the uh, mass spec imaging of the tissues that you can see. So each, so each from the same patient, we obtain this different sector of the tumors and the one control, again, uh, this is a three sector of tumors and the one control. So we plot uh, the uh, metabolites that we identified in this way. Uh, so what's the increase in the tumor region? So you can see, uh, we can see all the distribution of these metabolites in this seven, in this uh, six, five uh, different uh, sector of tumors, but absent from the control, right? But uh, you know, with this one, uh, we only plot uh, uh, the metabolites that only present in the, in the control regions that's absent from the uh, tumors that you can see. There's none from the tumors, it's all distributed in the, in the, in the control. Uh, yeah, so uh, this way I think it give you, um, give you better interpretation of your mass spec uh, imaging um, uh, uh, spectra. Uh, now I'm going to move on to applications. So we have developed so many different tools and then clearly since the birth of metabolomics, there are, uh, you know, exponential growth of the application of the metabolomics. Uh, so I, I, I checked it. Uh, so now uh, we have at least 25 different, uh, uh, different uh, application area. So clearly uh, I'm not expert in all these different areas. So I'm not, I'm, I'm interested mainly the, uh, the, to look at the how microbes and the how host interact. So we know that uh, the, they are reported, okay, 100 trillion of uh, microbes uh, resonant mainly in our, in our gut. There are over 1,000 different uh, species. So their genomes is 100, 150 times more than our human, humans. So sometimes uh, we, we, be, we, we wondering who's the parasite here, right? Uh, maybe the, the microbes think, you know, your humans are more par parasite compared to us. So the, we, we all know as we grow older, the microbes change dramatically. So uh, for, for, for example, uh, bifidobacteria, when we, when we were born, uh, they are majority 65% uh, but microbes uh, are, are belongs to um, bacteria, bacteria, the, the, the bifido, bif, bifidobacterium. So as we grow older, uh, particularly when we in in a, in the frail age, so the the bifidobacteria is only uh, present 0.5 percent or even less. So not only that, so we we increasingly realize, uh, apart from their fundamental um, uh, roles played in our uh, physiology, like uh, improve our immune system and 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 uh, help us. Uh, to develop the right uh, um, intestinal uh, structures. So there are other uh, 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 in impact of the microbes being recognized, such as play an important role in cancer, uh, fatty liver disease, obesity, even uh, coronary heart disease and neurological disease. And then we, we always think, okay, it's so important, but we w want to ask a question, how we could, uh, Modu modulate this, okay. There are other ways, right? So there's a drug modulation and then there's a fecal transplantation. So I think in this uh, category, most easy, easy and the low hanging, hanging fruit would be dietary modulation. So we believe, you know, uh, you, you, are, you are what you eat. And uh, also in Chinese uh, face, it's, it's uh, the same. So dietary played an important role in our gut microbes. So, so our research strategy is to use diet, uh, either personal nutrition or functional food, or uh, we, have a, we could have a improved digest uh, uh, food, uh, uh, maybe targeted uh, delivery system, particularly this is for elderly. Um, 
so it would modulate the gut microbes. So ho hopefully, uh, uh, impact on the host would be improve the digestion system and improve the metabolic disorders and improve the immune system and also neurological uh, functions. So this is our uh, 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 goal. So I've just uh, uh, give you an example how we use the metabolomics to tease out the, the functions of microbes. So we know the, uh, this is what we're interested in, this, the phenolic compound is present in widely in our, in our, in our diet. It, we, we already know they have uh, antioxidative functions, anti-inflammatories, and uh, uh, also inhibit uh, lipid metabolism. So when you're drinking, you drink tea after you have meal, uh, it's very benefit uh, uh, for your gut system. Uh, so we, we use this uh, 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 folic acid and quercetin as an example uh, to uh, give this uh, um, compound, pure compound, to, 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 to rats. And then within uh, six days of study that we could, uh, uh, we collected the feces and the urine so that you can see. Um, the the quercetin and the folic acid, largely they're very similar in terms of their urinary uh, uh, metabolic uh, uh, profile. So we can see the increase of heparate uh, and then decrease of endometabolize. Indoor, indoor so perhaps this one, this one is easy, easy to read. So we can see that uh, the, uh, either using quercetin or, or folic acid, we see the reduction of butyrate and the particularly increase of heparate, phenacetylglycine and endoacetylglycine. So this, this compound, so how are we going to dis, uh, explain uh, these uh, changes? Um, so this is, uh, uh, we already know, uh, this, uh, the phenylacetylglycine originate, originated from the phenylalanine. Uh, uh, so with, uh, with uh, some microbes uh, already working on the phenylalanine that produce, produce uh, phenylactic acid and then in the, in the liver, it conjugate with the glycine and then produce uh, phenylacetylglycine. So, uh, the function of the, phenom, uh, the, the phenolic compound can suppress the phenylalanine metabolic pathways. So, we also see the, the indoors metabolites also uh, decreased. Uh, so, the indoors metabolites we know is uh, originated from tryptophan. We find that there's a literature already indicated there's 51 different species of bacteria uh, that can um, uh, work on the, uh, fin, uh, the tryptophan and produce a range of uh, different indoles and then clearly indole, uh, lactic acid conjugate with the glycine in the liver that produce uh, indoacetic uh, glycine that we see is uh, suppressed by quercetin and by, phenol, uh, by, by um, folic acid. And then we also see the increase of the heparate. So we know the heparate is come from the different uh, phenols. So the, the gut microbes, the huge range of uh, metabolites has function of dehydrogenation. Uh, so that can um, convert the different phenols into benzoic acid, into different, uh, into range of the different uh, uh, um, uh, fin, uh, basonic acid, then this would conjugate with the glycine again in, in the liver that produce uh, heparate and the other uh, heparate related uh, uh, compound. So the, the, this we, 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 we now the function of the folic acid through the uh, through modulation of the gut microbes then produce different metabolites that we observed from our urine, right? So this is uh, basically is the function of the microbes, although we didn't measure the microbes. The follow study, we, you know, in the recent study, clearly we will measure these uh, microbes. And then we also look at the, the feces. Typically in the feces, we find a reduce of the butyrate, I mean, the Schottier fatty acid. And then, and then we can see increase of oligosaccharides in the, in the feces. That we know oligosaccharides and the, and the, the, and the uh, Schottier fatty acid is the, is the substrate of the oligosaccharides. So, so we, in, we see the accumulation of the substrate and then decrease of the product. Again, this is indicate that the phenolic compound does 
modulation of the gut microbes. Shame that we didn't have money to, you know, to, to, to do the, uh, the shotgun sequence of this study. So a second example I want to give you is the high-fat diet. So the high-fat diet, we gave these uh, 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 rats um, that uh, a control diet. So this is followed about 81 days. Uh, we, can, we can sampling those uh, in the different days. That if for this study, we performed the metagenomic study so th that we know what microbes has changed. So clearly, if this is from the uh, uh, family level or from genus level that you can see the, the, the high fat diet gave you, gave, gave the, 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 the animal uh, uh, a huge change in terms of their microbes. Uh, you, from very early on, as soon as seven days, that you, sh you see the changes, okay? And then uh, it's quite, quite in, in quite dynamic uh, uh, process uh, as we go along with the uh, continuous uh, hard fat diet. Just draw your attention to see uh, the, the fecal microbes changes, uh, uh, fecal microbial metabolite changes. So, so this is a range of metabolite change, just highlighting uh, um, the, the, the functions that related to uh, modulation of microbes. So we see the fermentation uh, metabolites uh, such as acetate butyrate, and we, saw, we also see aromatic metabolism changes that I showed you before, uh, like uh, tryptophan and uh, tyrosine. Those metabolites uh, uh, also we see changes. And, and, uh, and also, we can see the bi-acid change. So this study is using NMR. Okay, we can use NMR to see the total bi-acid change. So this is, this is a tiny signals we can see. As you can see, all the different bi-acid, uh, bi because of their similar, it's very, very, uh, the, the structure is very similar. So they all uh, happen, they all have peak in this area. So it's very difficult to tease out which, which uh, bi-acid actually changes, right? So in, in this case, we developed a, a complementary tool, which is LCMS. So in this, in this uh, you can see uh, the different bi-acid can be detected and separated using uh, LCMS uh, method. So for this study that we, 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 we use this LCMS just to look at the change of bi-acid. Bi so we can see that uh, um, the high-fat diet, uh, it makes huge differences in the in a uh, conjugated, uh, uh, conjugated uh, uh, by acid, uh, so you can see this uh, in a in a high fat diet. We we see the increase of taurine uh, deoxycholic acid uh, in in the liver, and then we see uh, deoxycholic acid increase in the plasma. So I just like draw your attention in deoxycholic acid here. So we also measured deoxycholic acid, uh, the, the, all the bi-acid in the feces as well. So again, we see the deoxycholic acid hugely increase uh, in a, in a um, high-fat diet. And the, the good, good uh, 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 bi-acid, the usual deoxycholic acid is dramatically reduced. So um, this is not what we wanted. So this is because uh, um, the functions that uh, has been function of gut microbes has been changed because of the high fat diet, as you can see here. Uh, uh, blo blood here, so this one is is highly correlated with the with the increase of uh, deoxycholic acid, and this one uh, is uh, uh, f has function of seven alpha de de uh, dehydrolate dehydrolation. So this is you can see dehydrolation. Uh, of the uh, taurine or glycine conjugated cholic acid that produce deoxycholic acid. Again, this deoxycholic acid uh, go back to the liver and conjugate it again, that we can see that uh, the taurine uh, conjugated the deoxycholic acid also increase in the plasma. We see the earlier, earlier, earlier slides. So this, 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 is the, this is again shows you the uh, modulation of the uh, diet can modulation or function of the microbes subsequently impact on the host uh, health. 
So I talked a lot more about the deoxycholic acid. So we didn't do the work that we searched the literature. So you can see in the literature, there's so many reports uh, showing toxicity of deoxycholic acid. It can reduce uh, 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 fat liver. It can also uh, co cause damage uh, to the uh, DNA. Uh, <laughs> subsequently, it cause uh, 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 cancer. So I think my time's probably up. I don't know the time, but uh, I think uh, the, the conclusion I want to, I want to show you that uh, uh, metabolics um, is a, a, a platform. It really has different tools, right? So it's really uh, when you want to resolve uh, uh, application issues, you really need integrate all these tools because we see the huge dynamic range of the metabolites. It's very difficult to use just a single tool to resolve your issue, right? So integrated approach is important. I also uh, showed the eye mobility is important uh, for particularly direct infusion uh, metabolites uh, like uh, single cell metabolomics and also, I, also the mass spec imaging. And that is important. We need to incorporate eye mobility in, in those uh, studies so we can have uh, more confidence in our um, uh, metabolized uh, assignment. And the final uh, that I'll show you, the metabolomics can be used for identify microbial metabolites. That has uh, that's really uh, indicated the function of uh, of uh, of the microbes. So I'd like to acknowledge my my collaborator from Fudan University, um, and also uh, my older institute. The work has done uh, by some of my postdocs, and my current postdoc and the research uh, assistant. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge the final support uh, previously by Chinese Academy of Science and also now with the uh, uh, LKC Medicine and the uh, um, uh, uh, Ministry of Education in, in Singapore. Uh, my research uh, group, uh, thank, thank them for their uh, hard work and their input. Uh, finally, I have uh, um, a little, little advertise. So we are recruiting. Yeah, so if you're interested, uh, Naya assistant professor, this is all year round uh, recruitment, so you can scan here, uh, send your CV. I'll thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Yulan Wan. And this is time for question and answers. So please remember to stay for Q&A for a bit, please. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand and our staff will go to you with the microphone. So uh, the microphone for Ajahn Wan Yipa down here, please, at the first row. Thank you so much. Uh, it's very. Uh, oops, some Thank you so much. Very good talk. Um, so I really believe uh, diet modulation is really change gut microbiome of human. So my question is that two questions. The first one is that how many sample size to capture uh, metabolomics data? Okay. And the second question is that uh, which cohort? that you came from, from Asian, from Chinese, or from Singaporean, or from which, uh, uh, which countries? Thank you. Okay, so um, as a size number, okay, as omics, we always want to have as many as possible, right, clearly, but that's not possible. Uh, so this is really depends on the uh, study you're interested, right? So for example, if you look at the dietary uh, impact, because the dietary the the, the the modulation to the system might, might be minimal, right? So in this case, uh, you need more numbers to compensate and then to, to be able to get a good, good outcome. But if you do drug study, right? So if you want to look at the impact of drug, this might not be need a, a lot study, uh, a number because the, the, the impact of the drug is more uh, profound yeah, so it really depends on your study. So this, these days when we do a population study, we normally uh, need to calculate, uh, you know, the number, number of the, uh, the patient, right? So th this is important. Um, as for a population uh, study, uh, I didn't have any result uh, here showing here, but I think uh, 
Um, the population that we have right now is uh, collaborated with the uh, uh, clinician. So uh, one of the projects I'm working on is we recruited 3,000 uh, uh, people with uh, uh, either fat liver disease or uh, HPV infection. So those uh, cohort likely develop, have a high risk to develop a, a different uh, liver, uh, de develop liver cancer, right? So, so this, in this study, we use a Singaporean um, uh, cohort. So we look at the progress of the metabolism and then we want to find the early onset biomarkers for uh, liver cancer. So it's really, uh, uh, it depends. So I'm also, uh, we can also collaborate. I know there's a different cohort. We, in Singapore, we have a 100K SG, right? So we, we collect uh, 100K uh, Singaporean, and this including, uh, you know, urine, plasma, plus um, some uh, clinical measurement. Yeah, so we, we yeah, in, in, in collaborate with this population, yes. It depends on the question you ask, yes. It's certainly very useful. Mm. Much.